Join us for Cheryl Reed O'Hagan's story of how the mystic Celtic harp showed her the deep roots of her own culture, the power of its vibrations, and the joy of giving it all away. This week at 9 p.m., Documentary Sunday presents Sailing on Strings, a Celtic harp story, as told by Cheryl Reed O'Hagan on Eastlink 10 and 610. Available only to Eastlink customers. Yeah. 
My name is Cheryl Reed O'Hagan, and I was born in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, in Obey is where I lived, and I could always smell the tide coming in. As a child, my parents loved music, and there was always singing, and my mom, she knew how to do the harmony. She could make up harmony by ear, and my dad has a nice, rich bass baritone voice and so we were always singing around the house there was nothing higher than somebody who could sing or play some kind of an instrument there were always people coming into the house with broken instruments for my dad to fix banjo violins whatever and he actually builds violins he's been doing that in his retirement and uh, there are quite a few violins around New Brunswick that he's built he also builds the tools that he used to build the violins, which I think is pretty special. I went to a one-room school in Oak Bay, and my favorite teacher was Miss Weber. She was my grade three teacher, and uh, she loved music. And so she entered us all into the uh, Kiwanis Music Festival. I had a song that had a high note in it, so my mother said, now you just sing that high note, just like this. And so between Miss Weber and my mother, I won my class and I won my first scholarship, and I was eight, so I'm pretty proud of that. And I think of all the people in that area, St. Stephen's, St. George, all that area who contributed money for scholarships through the years, it just made a huge difference in my life. I went to Mount Allison University and I took a Bachelor of Arts with a major in piano, the biggest, biggest harp of all. And um, I loved the music there. We studied all the composers, Gershwin and Bach and Rachmaninoff and everything. But my favorite um, ideas really came from Murray Schaefer, the Canadian composer. He had written the book Ear Cleaning, and he was telling about how sound or noise could be music. So he opened me up to these ideas. I taught myself to play the guitar, and uh, during university I was like everybody else. I was singing folk songs, and uh, I wrote, a, wrote protest songs, and read Black Like Me, and was part of that whole movement. But my antenna were up for something else. So in 1980, I went to see um, Mary O'Hara, sing in a concert here at the Rebecca Cohn, and um, she was playing the harp and singing with that. So I was watching her hands and I could see what she was doing with the levers, and all of a sudden I said, ah, that's, that's a harp, but it's actually a piano, and I could do that. So that's what really gave me the inspiration and the impetus. And then in 1989, I decided that I really wanted to go after that harp. So I went to see Siobhan McDonnell, um, who was the only person I could, who could find, really, who played in the area. Siobhan gave me a brochure, Sylvia Woods Harp Center in California, and I ordered one, and two months later, I had my first harp. And I wanted a, one that had a high head on the front. When I started to play the harp, I found that it was a lot more difficult than I had expected. But the thing about taking up the harp is that you don't take up the harp. The harp takes up you. And it's like a big addiction, and I had to have my fix every day. And that's not only with me, but other people I know who have taken up the harp, they say, wow, I have to have my fix of harp music every day. <laughs> so. People were so excited by the harp that they'd come up to me after singing, after a concert, and say, where did you get that harp and do you teach? And many of them had never been that close to a harp before. In 1997, I opened the East Coast Harp Shop, 
So I brought in 22 harps of the best builders in North America and France as well. And um, then after that, I realized that we needed a harp circle in order to have some fun. And so I started the Nova Scotia Harp Ring. Presently, the Nova Scotia Harp Ring is an all abilities group of teachers, performers, learners, harp therapists, many, many students. One of the places we like to play together is Callan's Hidden Gallery. They provide the art, we provide the music. The Celtic harp has really taken root here in Nova Scotia, so much so that some of the first students that I taught are now teaching their first students. So I'm so happy about that. During the time that I had started the uh, Harp Ring and East Coast Harp Shop, we also developed a performing group and we called ourselves Maeve. And we also made our own CD. And it's a combination of pipers, drummers, fiddlers, as well as harpists. I made two other CDs. The Darkest Midnight is the result of my quest to find the music of the bards before St. Patrick and Columba. And Sunny Day is a kicking down the road collection of some of my favorite trad tunes. I also performed with a neo-trad group, Fancy's Flight, for five or so years. 
and you can see now how the harp has become part of the fabric of Nova Scotia. So I'm very happy about that. Playing the harp has introduced me to music and people I might never have met. And by collaborating and teaching, I've grown in a way I could never have imagined. Thank you.